representative of the Ministry of Energy, Mr. Kona, Mr. Hoffman, and honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for the invitation to speak with you on this very important and very interesting topic today. Uh, it's certainly great to be with you. Uh, although I've just arrived in Madagascar, it's already clear to me how, the, how important the energy, and in particular the renewable energy sector is, to the country's development and its future. Without reliable electricity, Madagascar will never develop its economic or human potential. Without clean energy, threats to Madagascar's human population and wildlife will continue to endanger most everything that makes this island unique. And today I'd like to address three areas with you. First of all, I'd like to discuss how the U.S. sees the state of Madagascar's energy sector today. Second, I'd like to highlight business opportunities, especially in renewable energy. And third, I'd like to tell you how we at the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. government, along with the U.S. business community in Madagascar, can support you. The United States and the international community are aware of the weaknesses of the sector and the challenges it creates. For the last three years, Madagascar has ranked dead last in the World Bank's Doing Business Indicator in regard to the difficulty, delay, and cost of getting electricity. Only 15% of the population has access to energy, and in rural areas, that drops down to 6%. This is a result of a lack of generation capacity poor maintenance of existing generating facilities, and significant transmission and distribution constraints. This lack of electricity is a huge drag on the economy and is keeping foreign investment from flowing in, which could create jobs for the young population. However, this situation also presents, presents a tremendous opportunity for the U.S. and other international businesses. For example, getting existing resources to work would be a good first step in relieving the severe power shortages that plague the country. Today, Madagascar is only generating half of its official capacity because of years of neglect and insufficient maintenance. Symbian Power, a U.S. company, and its local partner, Vision Madagascar, just last month successfully rehabilitated and inaugurated the Mandraseza power plant here in Antananarivo, raising its production from 2 to 40 megawatts. As U.S. Ambassador Robert Yamate noted at the inauguration event, this two-and-a-half-year effort succeeded in bringing much-needed electricity to thousands of people here in the city. And it was not an easy road. There were plenty of challenges along the way, but through perseverance and hard work, Symbian was able to succeed in Madagascar's power generation market. Thermal power, especially if it utilizes lower-cost domestically produced heavy fuel oil, can help with immediate power needs in Madagascar's existing electricity grids. But in the long term, it cannot meet all of the country's tremendous potential demand. Madagascar's long-term energy future, like the rest of the world's, lies in renewable energy. They anticipate 400,000 people will benefit from electricity directly from the, uh, from the project of Symbia. So this is why City of Madagascar plans to develop additional power plants throughout the country, using not only domestic oil, but also renewables like biomass and solar. Another U.S. company, Fluidic, is about to launch a pilot project to provide off-grid solar power and battery backup to remote communities in Madagascar. Fluidic and its local partner, want to rephrase, signed an MOU with the President to bring electricity to 100 villages within two years using these systems. This will give electricity to 400,000 people. It will create up to 400 jobs for the women to install and maintain these systems, and it will create up an additional 400 jobs for assembling the batteries. The Ministry of Energy is going to host a formal ceremony tomorrow with representatives from Fluidic and Henry Fraze, as well as the Minister of Energy and Ambassador Yamante. The success of Symbion and Fluidic shows that when U.S. investors have an open and level playing field and are working with local partners, they are ready to supply market-based solutions to help Madagascar meet the tremendous demand for affordable and clean energy. 
the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. government stand ready to support these efforts. We have several programs that can help businesses succeed in Madagascar's energy market. First, we have the U.S. government's Power Africa program, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. By working with more than 140 public and private sector partners, Power Africa seeks to add 300,000 megawatts and 60 million connections in Sub-Saharan Africa by 2030. Power Africa partnerships connect investors and entrepreneurs to business opportunities in Africa. It draws on the combined expertise and abilities of 12 U.S. government agencies, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, the International Renewable Energy Agency, African governments, more than 130 private sector partners, Sweden, Norway, Canada, the United Kingdom, Japan, France, as well as the European Union. To date, Power Africa has supported projects expected to connect more than 8.8 .8 million homes and businesses, ultimately reaching more than 44 million people. In another program, the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, what we call the USTDA, links American businesses to export opportunities by providing grants for project planning activities, pilot projects, and reverse trade missions. <laughs> while creating sustainable infrastructure and economic growth in partner countries. USTDA is partly funding the Fluidic Henri Freys project with the grant of 804,000 US dollars. Fluidic will provide the other half of the project's $1.6 million cost. The embassy can also help US businesses directly by organizing meetings with Malagasy government officials and advocating for government policies that create a more attractive investment climate. In addition to the services available from the U.S. government, I would urge any business considering Madagascar to get in touch with the American Chamber of Commerce. AmCham, as we often call it, represents large and small U.S. businesses with a wealth of experience in navigating the waters of Madagascar's private sector. They are an invaluable source of information and support for businesses as well as networking opportunities and other established businesses. So, in summary, the challenges facing Madagascar in energy generation, storage, and distribution are significant, but so are the potential benefits to investors and consumers. So, the United States stands ready to help American and Malagasy partners work together to help Madagascar meet the needs of its citizens and its growing economy. Thank you.